It's on, Ernie. It is on. It's on. Good afternoon, everyone. How you doing? Wow. I will start off by saying there's Dave Morales from Fox Morning News and Backstage OL. Give How him a big you? round of applause. Thank you very much. And I was just about to say there's Houston Public Media PBS star Ernie Manoos. Dave, I have a funny feeling this isn't our crowd. It is our crowd. No. You know what it is, though? It's an aliens crowd. Aliens crowd! Yeah, they got a much bigger round of applause than we do. Well, you know, they did a, a, a pretty big film about 30 years ago, so we're, we're going to talk about that in a minute, you know. You know, we were backstage, and there were a whole bunch of people there, and I saw you had a whole bunch of friends. Can you yes. bring some of them out here for us? I, I think we, we can. I've got a do list here. Do you want to meet some of Dave's friends? Yeah, is that okay? Okay, I, I've got a list here, if that's okay with you guys, and I'm going to say their name, and perhaps you've heard of them. Uh, I'll say their uh, character. Have you heard of a private Spunkmeyer? Daniel Cash is here. <laughs> At it, least he's supposed to be. He's supposed to be here. Daniel, you want to come out and join us? In dress rehearsal, this is they, they came out, see, it was, uh, yeah. Well, while he makes his way to the stage, who else do you have? Well, I could go on to, to, to my next name. I've got a friend back there. Uh, played a character named Private Drake. A Mr. Mark Ralston is here today. <laughs> Mark, you know, are you sure they're here? Yeah, you know what? Actually, there was a can. There's a, can a big candy dish right there by. Uh, like, oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, we'll start again, you guys. There we are. <laughs> there they are. Have a seat, gentlemen. <laughs> I've got more friends, though, Ernie. Who else do you have? Well, I've got a... Uh, have you guys ever heard of a uh, Cynthia Dietrich? Cynthia Scott is here! You know, I like this next name, so I'm going to steal it from you. Played a character named Frost. How about Rico Ross? And we've got Private Vasquez in the house. Jeanette Goldstein. I had hope that Gorman would be here. William Hope. <laughs> Does anybody remember Private Hudson? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bill <laughs> Paxton. You know, I'm mad about him, but I'm even more mad about Burke. How about Paul Reiser? You guys remember Newt, of course, Rebecca Newt, Jordan. Carrie Han is here. Now, he was a character named Hicks, but he's my new best friend, Michael Bean. And if you're ready. So is that it? No, I think we've got one more. Who else? This Does looks anybody like remember everybody. Ellen Ripley, by chance? You know, what's, you know what's great? I actually got to interview her for her movie, Chappie, that just came out about a year ago. So I haven't seen her since then, but it's going to be great to see her. Welcome her to Houston, Texas, Sigourney Weaver! I won't tell you how strange it is to be standing backstage and see all of these people and suddenly you fear for your life that something's going to get on your face. Uh, but you know you're going to be in good hands if, well, some of them are there. It's a good thing. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, I, you know, I want to ask, and I always, we always ask this, Sigourney, it's good to see you again, by the way. See, I really do uh, have a TV job. We, we talked during Chappie. She's like, you're doing this? I'm like, yes, I'm doing it. So see, it's me again. Anyway, she's like, who are you? No. <laughs> anyway, good to see you. I always ask our guests when they, when they come to Houston, Texas here at Comic Palooza, how is your Houston, Texas experience going? What do you think of our fair city? Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. Well, it's, I'm sorry huh? about that. Sticky. Yeah. Let me, I want to jump in, and, and anybody that wants to take this and grab it, there is an entire audience out here that is thrilled to see all of you together because they have such a fondness for this movie. How do you guys reflect back on that film? And if I can start with Sigourney. Um... Well, it is so wonderful to see everyone. Um, I keep... 
It's a really good group, so thank you for giving us yet another excuse to get together. I always wish Jonesy were here because even though, I mean, he is, frankly, in the second one, but no one ever thinks to bring him. He's very upset, but anyway. Um, uh, I want to just thank everyone for coming because, you know, you guys are so warm and polite and welcoming. Everyone says thanks for coming to Houston, and it is really our pleasure to be here, and you make us feel so welcome. But looking back, um, I don't know. I think the movie, I, I'm so proud to be part of a movie that plays so well even today. I got to see it on Alien Day at um, Town Hall in uh, New York City, and I hadn't seen it for a long time. And to see it with a huge audience that knows all the dialogue and I honestly, it was just a great, great roller coaster ride and a thrill. And it's great to be back with all these guys and this grown woman here. Who I keep trying to pick her up and run with her, and she won't let me. <laughs> Carrie, what was it like growing up with it? Um, during the movie, or like You're growing up having this legacy with you? How often do people pull you back to Newt? Um, well, to be honest with you, like, I, once the movie came out, I, like, really had no concept of how big Aliens was until about seven or eight years ago. Um, and so now it's kind of cool, um, and it's fun to go and see stars, but it's a very surreal experience, because I'm a teacher, you know, and I just, like, this, it's just... All the teachers in the house. <laughs> but, like, people don't understand this part of my life. So it's kind of nice because my husband and children get to be a small part of it and see a little bit of me that it's hard for everyday people that I hang out with to really understand. So. Uh, I don't know if I should call you by your first names or your last names. I feel so weird, weird saying like Bill or Paul, uh, but I will. I'm going to say Paul. <laughs> it is weird to say that to them. For you, the experience of doing Aliens in your body of work, where does it fall for you? Well, it's a phenomenal body. Let's, uh, uh, <laughs> let's just take a moment, and because you brush right past it, but it's a <laughs> it's a substantial body. It was, you know, it's very, very rare that you read a script that you know is going to be good. And I remember reading this script. That not only was it, did you think it was going to be a hit, but it was actually ex exhilarating to read. I remember, like every twelve pages, I'd have to. Whew, this is getting a little intense. I had to walk around the living room. So it was, it's rare you know, to be included in something that you know is going to be good. And I remember just thinking, if I just don't screw up my little part, <laughs> this is going to work. So that was my goal. I had a very low bar for myself. Don't screw up the part that you're in. Yeah. How did you feel about playing the villain? Well, again, you say villain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are the villain, you know. I suppose from your point of view, sure. Uh, but I know those back at, at the office were very pleased with my performance. It depends, you know, what side of history you're on. <laughs> Michael, I'm going to pull it back here because I missed you going that direction. And real quick, can you watch the film and just enjoy it as a film? Or as you watch it, do all the memories of making it stay there with you? Well, you know, I actually had not seen the film for a long time. Um, by the way, there are two great, well, one's Terminator, but uh, there's a great, <laughs> there's, a gr there's a great documentary on the making of Aliens on YouTube. Oh. It's like a five-part series where all of us are, you know, and, and it shows the... You know, Jimmy, I think half the panel is unaware of this documentary that you're talking about. Well, <laughs> you should all guess, check it out. I, I guess they don't watch I we YouTube as, <laughs> as much as I do. But uh, um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but you're going to find out when I ask the same thing of Bill Paxton hey, Ernie, right Ernie, now. hold on a second. What you were saying? You I think he was dreaming them? about it. Oh, dreaming about the documentary. Well, I, what happened was I, I watched... Uh, I, I was flipping through the channels and looking for something to watch about probably about six months ago. And it is the part where that shell is being opened and they find you at the very beginning of the movie. Oh, yeah. And then it's, and, 
and thing falls in, and I started watching it, and I just ended up watching the whole thing. <laughs> and the movie is um, so special. It's so special. We all, I think, all felt, everybody that worked on the movie felt like it had a chance to be really good. I don't think anybody expected to be 35 years later sitting here talking about it, but when I watched the movie and I kind of like was analyzing it, and I get so many ch children, I mean, that are eight and 10 years old, that are 12 years old, that, you know, parents will let them watch the movie. And it's like, the little girls come up to me and they're this tall, and they're like, I love you, Hicks, I love you, you know? <laughs> it's like three generations down, you know? And I'll say to kids, what's your favorite movie? Captain America, and, no, Aliens. Aliens is my favorite movie, yeah. you know? And uh, so it's... One of the, uh, one of the things that um, I realized when I watched the movie that I really hadn't thought about before was how, why people like the character of Hick so much, and it goes back to James Cameron. And if you watch Hicks in the movie, he's always smiling, you know? And he's usually smiling <laughs> and he, you know, is impressed, and he is um, surprised, I think, and um, just a little bit, um, a little crushy kind of deal going on there, you know? And um, I think that the, I think that the thing was so cool about that character is that it, I was able to kind of give it up to you. And everything was like, like, that made Hicks cool was the, spe the fact that I respected you and that what you, that I knew that you knew what was going on and nobody else did and, 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 and <laughs> but I wasn't gonna act like I was. And so it's not the shooting and it's not like, and oh, great scenes with the aliens were coming out and we were shooting and a lot of, but it's not, He's not a tough guy, you know? It was that little relationship. And by the way, um, that was written into the script by, by Jim Cameron. There was no, um, uh, and, and I don't get a chance to play that, that leading man character very often. And so I was very pleased at that kind of, I always call it a light story, yeah. you know? And uh, I was very pleased at the like story and realized that as I watched the movie, why people like it so much, especially when they're young. Bill, let me ask you real quick. Why do you think the movie holds up? I think I eat too much barbecue. I, I need, <laughs> does anybody have a Tums? <laughs> yeah, I just want to say one thing to Paul Reiser. Maybe you haven't been keeping up on current events, but we just got our asses kicked, pal! <laughs> He's off book. I still can't believe I, I, I'm even in the movie. Uh, I, I was scared the whole time I was making it. <laughs> Not just as the character. Thank God Sigourney kind of held my hand. I remember one time we were, shoot, we're shooting the scene where I think I do say that to you. And Michael's at the table and, and Carrie and Sigourney. And I, I have to say something about uh, 17 days... Well, you guys know the line. Um, and Sigourney could see I was struggling. And she reached out and just put her hand on my hand and kind of looked at me like, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, Thank you, Sigourney. Dave, I'm throwing it over to your side of the table. Looks like my eyes yeah. are going back. Actually, you know, I, I got a question I want to ask. I want to go down the line. Do you guys remember your auditions? I want to talk about your auditions uh, for, this, for this film. We'll, we'll start down here. Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> I was at... I, it was my first job. It was one of my first auditions ever. I had uh, broken my leg, and I came in on crutches, and I was in a waiting room, and Al Matthews was pushing people around in a very tough way, and I was scared out of my mind. Um, and then I walked in, and I actually went up for uh, Bill's part, and uh, I wanted to be a classical theater actor, so I, to be honest, I, I was going, I don't want to be in this movie thing right now. 
And uh, so I, I walked in, and there was two, two very young people running a camera. And I said, listen, this is written for a black man. You need to rewrite this. This, is, uh, this, this writing just doesn't work. Just uh, do something better, and then, and then call me back. And I was wearing, I did, and I was wearing a very funky kind of cool coat that was in fat at the time in England. And uh, I got three recalls for that thing, and then I got, I finally got the part. And, uh, the people that I was pushing around were James Cameron and Gail and Hurd. <laughs> <Wow. laughs> so I guess it's, uh, it counts to be cocky at some point in your life. Also, he said, you can, you can have the part if you give me the coat. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> Mark? Um, yeah, uh, I, I had a very interesting audition. I'd just uh, done a movie uh, called Revolution with Al Pacino, which was an awful film. Um, <laughs> and got called in. I first met with Gail Ann Hurd, and uh, Gail said, so, well, what have you been doing? And I began to weave a tale. It was a total fabrication and lie that I had the best role next to Al Pacino in this film. <laughs> And I, I, I was so convincing, uh, I finally got called back to see Jim. But, you know, sometimes lying works. Now, Jeanette, there's quite a bit of folklore around your audition. So <laughs> please set the record straight for us. OK, I'll, I'll set the record straight. So okay. some, of it, some of it's true, some of it isn't. Um, so I saw, I didn't have an agent. I was a, a theater actress. And I saw a call for a film called Aliens and they were looking for a North American and American actors who held a British equity card. And in um, England, if you have your green card, it's called your resident alien card. So I sort of thought, well, what's this film about? Um, you know, I'd seen Alien, but it was, you know, it just didn't pass across my mind that it would be the sequel. So I thought, well, maybe, oh, they want American actors. Maybe it's about a film about how Americans marry British people on the sly, <laughs> you know, to get their resident. Alien. Car. So I absolutely thought it was that. So I, you know, I had a first meeting um, with uh, Gail, and I dressed, which I figured was appropriate for a meeting, and uh, sort of a nice pair of slacks and pumps and like a little silk blouse. And it was a warm day, so I, I had bare arms. And then um, actually, I saw the poster of Terminator on the wall behind, and I was like, cool poster. Where'd you get it? You know, I had no idea. <laughs> it was like her bedroom. She's like, we made that film. Um, and then she said, do you know what this film is about? And I said, no, I, I don't. And she goes, well, it's about, you know, did you see Alien? Yeah, well, this is the sequel, and it's about a, a lot of Marines who go up to, and then I was like, in my mind, was like, oh, my God, I'm wearing the wrong thing completely. <laughs> oh, my God. I, and the, but she said, so there's a lot of Marines. And then I said, well, um, then I made muscle. And because I was in the best shape of my life at that point. And um, she said, oh, my God, are you... Are you a, you're not an actor, so you're, you're a bodybuilder? I said, no, I'm, a, I'm, I'm an actress, but I just, I like going to the gym a lot. And um, so she um, said, okay, well, come back and um, dress appropriately this time. <laughs> so I, you know, scraped my hair back and came back in combat boots. And I was reading for, um, I was given the sides of, um, the sides, the, the lines of Vasquez and was told you're not auditioning for her because we're casting it in the U.S. And, um, but there's not as many lines for the pilot and, and for Cynthia's part. And, but I came back and I read it as Vasquez because I didn't know how to read, how do you read something that's not the person. And then they kept having me come back and then actually they gave me Bill's, gave me Hudson's role to read. And again said, you're not playing him, but we just want to hear you read the role of Hudson. So then I read it as Hudson. And then I kept, it was very confusing, and I kept coming back and back, and then finally, um, yeah, this young couple, who I had no idea who they were, I was kind of confused, um, had me keep reading for Vasquez and talking, me, talking to me, and then um, they said, well, we're not, we want you to be in the film, but we're not sure who it is, so you're in the film, and we'll call you in a couple of weeks. And I was, you know, I was so excited to be, to have a job before I was 30, so I was, like, I was over the moon. <laughs> And then um, I guess that, you know, it took, them a, it took Jim a, a while to go back to Fox and kind of explain to them that, you know, this was his choice and I'd never, you know, done a film. And, and then I got the role of Vasquez, which is... And now later today you'll be doing your one-woman performance of Alien where you play all the characters on stage for oh, us, that, right? Yes. <laughs> a new career for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> back over to Cynthia. I didn't mean to cut you off when we were going through it. Um, I don't actually remember 
with whom I met first. I just remember what must have been my callback. I was, as the rest of us, most of us were living in England, in London, and I was living in a, a squat, a licensed squat with flatmates, and I rode a bike as my transportation, and I remember my flatmate knocking on my door, and I opened my bedroom door, and he's standing with a, a befuddled expression on his face and a big, thick envelope. He said, this just arrived for you by motorbike messenger from 20th Century Fox. And I said, oh yeah, that's my sides. My first job, too. I do remember, and they, I think they read all the women at that point for, for Vasquez, with Vasquez's lines. And so I read the, you know, the sides and studied up, and I, at least I, I guess I had a little more information than Jeanette had at the time. And I realized, okay, this is like super fit, like buffed, threatening woman. So I went to the gym before the audition. <laughs> And I already had pretty short hair, that helped. And, um, and I rode my bike to the audition through Trafalgar Square, which is taking your life in your hands. And I rode like a bat out of hell, I, like aggressively like, get out of my way, double-decker buses! And you know, like, and, and I, I, I only remember, I think that was it. I think I got cast out, out of that one. <laughs> Rico? Um, I, I was a little bit like, like Danny. I think I, I walked in there, and the only thing bigger, taller than me was my ego. You know, I walked in there. I, and I, I, had, um, I had been auditioning a lot for movies uh, at that time. I was living in London, and I had already auditioned for, um, for full, full Metal Jacket, and they were, they were very interested. So when I walked in for Aliens, and I, I, you got to keep in mind, Jim Cameron wasn't the Jim Cameron that everybody knows at that point. Right. So nobody knew him. And... When I saw the movie Alien, I, I mean, I, I thought it an interesting uh, concept, but I was really uh, interested in this Full Metal Jacket because it was Stanley Kubrick, and every actor at that time wanted to work with Stanley Kubrick. So I met with him, and he had me read uh, uh, Hicks and Hudson's role, but he said the same thing. He says, but you're not going to be cast in those roles, which wasn't, wasn't a nice thing to say to me with my ego, you know? So, uh, so now I'm thinking, well, uh, I mean, if, I, I, I basically, I mean, I can't believe this now, but I told him at that time, I said, well, if, if it's not for Hicks or Hudson, uh, I'm really not interested. And, <laughs> and uh, he says, well, listen, I'll tell you this. I want you to be in the movie. I just can't tell you right now. We're just starting the cast, and, but I do want you to be in the movie. And he says, I'll rewrite the script, and I'll, I'll write you a nice role, and I'll put some characters together, and you'll be happy. So I went away, and he said, but before you accept the uh, Kubrick job, just meet with me again. So I went back to Kubrick. I told him what was happening. And Kubrick says, well, listen, I need you for eight weeks. And I went back to James and said, James, he, he needs me for eight weeks. And James says, well, I'll, I'll let you come a week late to our, our shoot if Kubrick will release you. I went, great, I can do both these movies. Anyway, I went back to Kubrick, and Kubrick says, no, nah, I can't release you, though. I can't guarantee you. Well, most of you who know Stanley Kubrick, his film, that film took over a year to make Full Metal Jacket. <laughs> and so now I understand why he couldn't release me after eight weeks. Anyway, it forced me to make a choice, and, and, and James says, listen, I, I'll, I'll rewrite this script. I wrote the script. I'll make you, I'll make you happy. And he says, and um, I'll pay you, pay you your fee. Whereas Kubrick didn't want me to read the script. Nobody read the script for Kubrick's film. You got the sides, and he says, what we do is we're going to go and we're going to workshop it, and whatever you bring to it is what we're going to bring out of it. And as an actor, you like that challenge. But you don't know what you're going to be doing, you know, and that's a little scary. So uh, I, I kind of, like, had to make a choice, and I went with James, and the rest is history. Good, good choice. And we'll wrap it up with William answering that one. William. I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, it's... Um... Uh, there's a, a few themes running through this because we were all, I mean, kind of this side of the table was living in London. And um, I never met Stanley Kubrick, but I met Leon Vitale, his acting coach. You, I, as far as I knew, you didn't meet Stanley. You didn't meet him till day one of, of shooting. And uh, I did a lot of auditions for Leon, uh, a lot of really hard work. I think I saw them four or five times. And then he came back and said, Stanley loves you. He wants you to do this, sending the contract to your agent. And I thought, it's great. I mean, Stanley Kubrick, as far as I was concerned, was God. And I, sure, you didn't get a uh, contract finish date. 
could have gone on for two years. He used to be there. And he was going to pay everybody across the board, apart from Matthew Modine, who was, you know, going to get paid a bit more. But um, uh, so uh, then my agent rings me up before I've signed his contract and says, uh, they want to see you for a science fiction movie. And I said, yeah, Sally, do I want to, you know, do a science fiction movie? I'm working for Stanley Kubrick. And he said, no, 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 it's a good script. It's, it's just go along and see him. And I, I almost didn't want to do it. I said, yeah, OK. But I've been doing a, a play at the time, doing quite a lot of theater, um, Private Wars by Jim McClure about veterans, Vietnam veterans. And so I was shaved and pumped and, uh, you know, uh, armied up. And uh, I went in to meet Jim and Gail at 20th Century Fox. And they, we were talking in the chat. And they said, right, OK. Here's a script. Give me Hudson's lines. We want you to come back because I, I just been playing this this really quite crazy damaged guy. You're so lucky you got and, that role. Uh, <laughs> and he said we're looking at Bill Paxton, but I no, they didn't say that. <laughs> but uh, so I got down to the lobby with the script in my hand, gonna go and sit in Soho Park and kind of learn it and come back and see them in two hours. And um, just as I'm going out the door, the uh, receptionist goes, hey, Mr. Hope, uh, come back. Uh, we've been sent. Give me those. I want you to look at this instead. Gorman. So I go back and I learn. Look at the script for like a couple of hours. Come back at 3 o'clock. So I came back. And um, I just remember Gail and Jim bickering. I mean, Jim going, I, I'm shooting this audition. Do you, do you want to shoot it? You're going to tell me how to do this? Wow. Back and forth. So... Uh, <laughs> So there were, I, I didn't know who these guys were, and I hadn't seen Terminator there, but they were, you know, personal. And I think actually what got me the job, because I auditioned, they said, and they said, so what are you doing now? I said, well, I'm about to go and make a movie with Stanley Kubrick. Jim fell off his chair. He told me that as a physics student, before he went to Roger Corman, um, he saw 2001 Space Odyssey, and that moment changed his life. He thought, right, this is it, I'm making movies to hell with physics. And so I think Kubrick was, was a, you know, huge, huge hero um, and inspiration to Jim. So two days later, the casting director rings up Mary Selway, lovely lady, bless her, not with us any longer. Uh, rang up and said, you are not going to believe this. Jim wants to offer uh, a leading role to William, which is like two days after I met them. And uh, I, I was a little blasé. I hadn't seen the script yet. The script arrived, and I read it, and I just could not believe it. I mean, talk about it. I finished the script on the john at 4 o'clock in the morning <laughs> because I couldn't put it down. I thought, i got to go to the john. I thought, no, I can't stop reading this. And I finished it, the back sitting on the john. I couldn't move. The script was unputdownable. But so there we go. Thank you all. And, uh, oh. We are, of course, very tight on time. When you look at this panel that's been assembled here to get all of these folks in one room at one moment was quite a feat. So we are tight on time. We're going to go out here for questions, for a couple questions from the audience. But Dave, I thought you had yes. someone that had wanted Actually, to say something Actually, I, I do. I have, I have a surprise for somebody at this, uh, at this table. Uh, there's a, a movie out in theaters. Maybe some of you have already seen it. It's, it's going to be number one at the box office this weekend called Finding Dory. Well, there, there's somebody in this mo and at this table that's actually in the movie, Sigourney mm -hmm. Weaver. Yeah. yeah, wait, hold on. It gets better. It gets better. So uh, I, I talked to a couple of your friends, a couple of our friends last week in Los Angeles, and uh, I, they recorded something they wanted to say something to you about the movie Finding Dory. So Sigourney, this is my little present to you. Take a look at the screens, guys. I'm actually going to be with Sigourney Weaver next week. You are? You yes, are. I'm hosting a panel in Houston. I hope she's seen it by then. And she might not have seen it. I know. Okay. Will you give her big hugs from us? Do you want to say anything to Sigourney? Hi, Sigourney. Sigourney. We miss you. And your part in this film... People love you. Love, like love. Every time your name is mentioned, you get a huge round of applause and laughter. So, I mean, hopefully so, you so see it. Just be nice to Dave Morales from Houston, Texas. We love Dave Morales from Houston, Texas. <laughs> Oh my God, the audience, every oh, time you hear her name, the audience laughed. I love that. <laughs> I mean, I think it's the most hilarious thing that they they put that in. Does she even know that she's... Well, obviously she knows, because she said, I'm Sigourney Weaver, but I don't, <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, if, yeah. I don't know if she knows how great a, and what a big hit she is. I wish she would have been at the premiere, because she's a hit. You should tell her. You tell her the, I'm going to show her this video. 
I'm going to be with her. You want to tell her? Well, yeah, Sigourney, obviously you're going to go see the show, the, the, the movie, but um, when you see the movie, just know that you are a big, big uh, star in this film. Well, there you go. That was for you. That was for you. There you go. All right, we promised a couple questions from the audience. Where do we begin? Gentlemen right here, do you have a question? I love oh, little Sigourney. gentleman. <laughs> uh, again, she didn't hear you I love you, Sigourney. <laughs> I love you, Sigourney. Sweet, sweetheart. <laughs> is that the full no, question? The question is. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't need much of a response. I think we'll we got the later. message. The, the question is for Sigourney. What was your favorite scene to film in Aliens? Favorite wow. scene in Aliens. Gosh. Um, oh, that's so hard to choose. That's like choosing one of your children. Which um, is your favorite child? <laughs> you know, one of the most amazing scenes, and I must say I loved working. All of our scenes as an ensemble were so exciting, but the scene I remember the most, maybe, uh, well, anyway, was going in with um, Carrie to the Queen's Chamber, because, you know, you read the script, you don't know what the Queen's Chamber is, you don't know what the Queen is, so going into this majestic, huge space, filled with these eggs, and then seeing this creature come out for the first time and eggs jump out. I mean, sometimes when you're an actor, you're like, is, is this really happening? You know, because they, they kind of just shoot, you know, and there's no rehearsal with these big effects sometimes. So I just remember it was like really being in the Queen's Chamber with Newt and having to shoot, uh, shoot, you know, humans, no, shoot aliens with uh, uh, bullets and then torch dummies with fire and then, and then um, whatever that thing was, uh, you know, explode the whole set. So it was really a great day. You know? And what people... What is that? What people might not remember is when those films were being made, we weren't in this wild CGI world, so much of it was concrete. You touched and you interacted with these things. Not like today where it's all green screen. Oh, I know. I, feel, I think we all feel so lucky that what we were playing opposite, uh, even if a creature, uh, that it was real and that there was, an, there was actually an entity inside of it. And uh, I, uh, I think it's so much more difficult, not with, not with um, performance capture, but with green screens and all that stuff that's added later. I think that's really hard for an actor to pretend that, this, that the scene is happening. Wouldn't you agree? Sigourney read for the part of Hudson. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad they gave her the other role. <laughs> All right, next question, Dave. What do you right. have over there? We got we, a question from my side Thank over you. here. Go ahead, step up to the mic, sir. How are you? Hello, everybody. Um, what I think is unique about Aliens is each character that dies in the movie has a death scene that almost matches their character in a way. And I'd like to know from each of you, I mean, my favorite death scene is, of course, is, you know, Vasquez sitting there in that, <laughs> with, you know, being wrapped up. We call it the know, love scene. They're going to reenact this for scene. you. But I'd like to know from... You always were an asshole, Gorman. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted that line so badly. But what I'd like to know from each of you is what your favorite death scene in the film was. Aside from our own. <laughs> I, I would say the... I, I only say, had one. <laughs> he, they each only had one death scene. The death scene? I had a different take on the death scenes. I actually hated them because it meant each time there was one, someone else left. And Sigourney and I used to kind of joke and say that we were like the orphans that nobody wanted. Because everyone was leaving and we were like still there. So it was kind of sad. For me, it was sad just because they were all leaving. You happy? You made her upset. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly over here, we got time for maybe two more questions. I'm sorry about that. Over here. Uh, quick question. Actually, let me just quickly say, uh, I came all the way from Ojai, California to see you guys. Seeing you guys all together, I feel like a hardcore Christian getting to see like Jesus and the 12 disciples. I mean, this is like <laughs> Honestly, thank you guys so much for coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> in the middle of the table. 
Uh, my question is, um, there's two versions of the film. There's the original 1986 release version, which cut a lot, and then Jim Cameron got to like, re-release his original version in 91. To those of you who have seen both, which is your favorite? Do you prefer the original or the director's cut? Let's do a hand up if you know. Original 86 Well, I have more lines in the second one. So, so you like the second one. <laughs> My brother was in the second one, so I So you got to see your brother. So I prefer the, second? The dance numbers slowed it down. I, I, felt that, <laughs> I thought that he was wise to cut that in the original. And why they were cut. Over to that side. These are awesome, by the way. I just want to say, I love you guys. And my question is, what's going on with Alien 5? I am, I am so oh! curious about it. I, I must have it. I oh! must have it. Hicks and Ripley together again. I must have yeah, it. We're fucking dead. <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked that because it's, uh, it's such a brilliant script. And Neil Blomkamp has every intention of doing it. We were asked to wait while Ridley Scott does his Prometheus movie because, uh, understandably, they didn't want both movies coming out at the same time. So uh, I think now, um, I think now Neil is directing Gone World, and uh, and I have a little thing called Avatar to do. But then, then. Then we're going to do it. Michael is not dead. He's going to be in it with me. And, uh, maybe you could, and maybe I'm you so could excited about it. I'm really so excited about it because, you know, Neil is, he grew up watching these movies and broke the tapes. He watched them so many times growing up. And so to me, even though all of the writers have been brilliant, He's the first real fan of the movie that got to write a script and direct it, and I think it's really going to be really satisfying to fans. All right, thanks. Good so much. question. I could not think of a better note to wrap this up on. I have been told that they had to be out by 2:45. We gave you an extra five minutes, ladies and gentlemen. The cast of Aliens. Damn it. A warm Houston thank you. Thank you all for coming. Thank you folks for joining us.